Hey cats, it's Ed Midsole Bud here with a nitrogen infused running shoe review of the Brooks Hyperion. I love the previous version of this shoe that was released back in 2020, although there's been loads of Brooks Hyperion models before that. This one certainly follows on from that Luke Skywalker Blue Milk version. We still have the DNA flash material here in the midsole. Does it still hold up though in 2023? Let's get to it. Thanks for tuning in people, it's always appreciated. Do hit that subscribe button and click the bell for notifications too. Really helps out if you give this video a thumbs up like and share it with your running buddies. Danke schön. I really love the previous version of the Hyperion, the Hyperion Tempo, that was out back in 2020. How does this new version of the shoe hold up though now? I have a weight here in my UK size 11, US size 12 of 251 grams or 8.9 ounces. That does make it one of Brooks' much lighter shoes and one of the lightest actually in my current rotation of testing. So it's about 8 grams heavier than the previous version. It's about 0.3 of an ounce. I reckon that's probably down to the slightly more generous rubber on the outsole. I've got the midsole coming in with a sure A gerometer score of about 28. That's bang on average for all of the shoes I've tested thus far. Perhaps closer to something like the Primex Light Strike Pro, similar to the nitro material in fact that we find in some of the Puma models. In terms of midsole stack I've got about 34 millimeters here in the heel and about 26 millimeters in the forefoot. So that makes for about an 8 millimeter drop and it's pretty much identical to exactly what we had back in 2020 with the Hyperion Tempo. I did measure my old pair of the Hyperion Tempo and I think the heels compressed down a little bit but it's only by a couple of millimeters. I've got a Shure durometer reading of about 60 for the outsole rubber on the Hyperion and I think we've got round about the same thickness in terms of the rubber depth of about 3.5 millimeters as per the last shoe and the same in terms of the landing platform here too about 11.7 centimeters in the widest point in the forefoot and about 8.5 in the heel so quite a bit more forefoot width than something like the nike pegasus but much narrower in the heel i think brooks see this one as a sort of higher pace tempo shoe you can use on a more daily basis just supposed to be a little bit more durable than some of those sort of race like efforts though i think people will find it really low in terms of weight you could use it as a daily driver if you're one of those sort of more wispy lighter built runners i suppose weight comparison too this one comes in about 84 grams lighter than a pegasus and even 34 grams lighter than the nova blast 3 and a lot of people see that as being one of the lightest or more nimble shoes in the current crop i mean you're only about 10 to 15 grams away from this being the same sort of weight as a race shoe like the vaporfly i think the carbon x2 is possibly about the same weight as this one so don't discount it as being a possible race option for like five or ten k we'll kick off with the upper first brooks have stuck with what worked in the previous version of the shoe they haven't messed around too much we have a very thin mesh surrounding the toe box and a very minimal collar there back in the heel it's quite a pronounced heel flare actually as per the last version of the shoe i really like this aspect of the shoe keeps the heel away from the achilles just feels like there's very little on foot and I like it. When you get it on foot, it does feel like a shoe that's intended for faster paces. No messing around with this one. Very standard sort of lacing system here. Nothing flashy, no bells and whistles. Lace length is reasonable, though I would suggest the laces are quite coarse. They're quite rigid, actually, which is a complete turnaround from the last version. The Hyperion Tempo had these almost elasticated laces and it was quite hard to dial in the fit. Here, it's the complete opposite it these are very rigid they don't give whatsoever so perhaps i may swap these out for something a little bit more forgiving i'm not having to pull the upper in as much around my foot as i did in the first version of the shoe i think the upper material in terms of the actual amount you have here isn't quite as generous as it was before and that's a good thing although i'd say it's still quite an accommodating upper i don't think you need to go down a half size or anything it's pretty much true to size brooks have kept the overlays here on 
the high pier into the absolute minimum. Back in the heel there, you've got a small reflective element and then you've got the Brooks logos on the lateral and the medial sides of the shoe. And that is it basically. The tongue is super thin. There's very little padding there. If you're expecting a very plush shoe, then go elsewhere. I'm all for that though. It's keeping the weight down really low. I mean, where else are you gonna find a shoe in my size that's about 250 grams? It just doesn't happen all that often. Certainly very flexible here. You don't have the rigidity of a plate or anything within the midsole. It does remind me a little bit of something like the Pegasus Turbo 2 from Nike. I mean, it's not quite as minimal as that, but it's close. I like the ankle collar. I like the thin tongue. Just enough for me. No major padding here. The tongue is partially gusseted on one side, but one side only. Just to avoid any tongue slip, I've not had any as such. So only really the laces letting things down a little bit here, and perhaps a lack of padding depending on the type of sock that you're using. Nothing too much though for me to lower the score down. I'll give it a 2.7 out of 3 after my initial runs for the upper. Not quite perfect, but... It's get in there, it's pretty close. Midsole now. So midsole wise, the formula still holds up here that they've used from 2020. The shoe's nimble at pace. I enjoyed some really nice repeats in this one. It kind of sings for me around about tempo pace, which is about seven minutes 30 per mile. I'm finding the Hyperion's got just about the right amount of bounce. It's not too squashy. It's certainly one of those more rebound like foams here. If you want a shoe that's all out compression, then go elsewhere. It's still presenting though, the runner with a bit of ground feel. I mean, it's not a minimal shoe in comparison to some of the stuff from years back, but it's certainly one of the more minimal shoes that's around at the moment. If you hark back to those sort of days, you know, when 34 millimeters would have been a huge stack, then this one could work for you. It might give you some sweet memories. I think it's impossible not to find this shoe quite engaging and quite exciting to run in. There's less rigidity than we find in something like the Adios 8 from Adidas. Of course, we've got none of the shenanigans going on here with those torsion plates and things. That shoe does feel a little bit more aggressive. It certainly feels a little bit more clunky, I suppose, than the Hyperion. This one feels quite natural, in fact. Yeah all paces really i didn't find it weird or anything running very slowly at a recovery speed but it really likes to go quick when you push it this one could perhaps appeal to those that liked some of the elements in the adios 8 but they wanted something that's a little bit less rigid a little bit more forgiving i suppose no avert squash here in the nitrogen infused midsole material it sort of bounces you off onto your next stride i think that's why we're seeing a raft of midsoles with the same durometer score Everyone seems to be coming in around about 28 these days. Lots of the same softness levels. Very few, in fact, like the Invincible Run, which is coming in at like 22 or something. These type of foams have a little bit of resilience over time, and I think that's why people are gravitating towards them. Again, it's kind of like a Pegasus Turbo, though, but without the Zoom X, where we had a recent reboot of that shoe with the glued together Zoom X scraps. Here you've got something that feels a lot more consistent underfoot. So I think if you liked the Brooks Hyperion Tempo, this is simply more of the same and updated model perhaps closer to something like the puma liberate nitro 2 or their deviate nitro as well if you don't want the plate and you just want something very simple like the old days sort of then this could be for you i'll give the midsole 2.7 out of 3 after my initial runs outsole now well the rubber is certainly sticky it has to be said it's a bit of an improvement on what we had in the previous version again similar to that adios 8 in terms of what it's doing a smoother texture but with a little bit more depth than the adidas shoe brooks have attempted to weight relieve the material here a little bit by introducing some of these cutouts and holes and we've got two sections that stretch way back into the heel i think the majority of your time in this shoe will be spent certainly in the mid to four foot going to be using it for those fast session some tempo running maybe even some racing at 5 to 10k i think it's a reasonably versatile shoe for all of that in terms of the outsole certainly suited perhaps a little bit more for road and concrete use perhaps a little less for trails with that smoother outsole sort of texture i bet you could even use it on the track as well for some of those speed sessions though i think perhaps the lugs on something like the liberate nitro 2 have got a little bit more bite to them perhaps not quite the same versatility in terms of multi-surface use here in the Hyperion. The only letdown here is the small holes that they've cut out do fill up with grit really quickly. I mean there's 
masses of it here after only like three runs it's going to be one of those shoes where you're going to need to get the jeweler's screwdriver out and clear it out every so often and we do have quite a bit of exposed material here in the midsole kev next percent burton knows all about this at the moment he got some really bad stones stuck into his vapor flies recently but there's very few ways out of that one guys so it's going to be a shoe that picks up a load of stowaways as you use it you just can't have it all in the outsole this presents a little bit more flexibility but it's going to pick up some stones i think they've got the amount of rubber right though you can use this as a daily shoe it's not going to be one you're going to have to save back just for sort of racing or tempo i think you'll get some good miles out of these and there's enough rubber back here in the heel to protect that exposed midsole material i didn't seem to get this same problem on the original hyperion tempo so it's a little bit of a letdown i suppose in terms of the outsole but it still works really well across lots of different weather conditions I'll give it a 2.6 so far for the outsole after my initial runs. Value now. So these are coming in at about 140 Earth credits here in the UK. Pretty much exactly the same price as the Hyperion Tempo was back in 2020. So I'm glad to see that Brooks have kept the shoe around about the same price. I think it's a good alternative, saying like the Adios series or perhaps the Endorphin Speed 3. Speed 3 perhaps to some people feels like a little bit too much shoe these days. I wasn't really a fan of the wide sort of plate stability that we had. I like the previous two versions a bit better. I think the Hyperion's coming in at a good price point, really, for what you're actually getting. Quality of the shoes, really nice out of the box. I think a lot of people grab carbon plate shoes, find them a little bit awkward, perhaps, to use, perhaps vertigo inducing there's very few bells and whistles here no strange asymmetric lacing just out of the box really nice good build quality there's no glue marks wayward elements whatsoever feels like good value it doesn't feel like a shoe either that you have to break in you can just get it straight out and use it i think i'll give this a initial value score of 2.7 out of 3 i can see this one going on for hundreds of miles looking back at the hope here in tempo that's exactly what i thought about that shoe really it just went on and on with almost no abrasion or wear after 100 miles i see the same happening here if i total the scores up correctly after my initial runs for the hyperion from brooks it's a 10.7 out of 12. Has this shoe been on your radar? Will you be picking it up soon? Were you a fan of the Hyperion Tempo from back in 2020? Let me know your thoughts and opinions on this one down in the comments. Very quick musical interlude for you. Recently went to watch Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny. Gotta be honest, I actually quite enjoyed it. If you just take it for what it is, which is a action adventure movie, then it's really quite fun some people aren't enjoying certain elements of it well that's okay the music absolutely fantastic listening back to the album that accompanies the actual film there's one track on there that nails it it's called new york 1969 which i don't want to enter into any spoilers here there's a wonderful repeat of the indiana jones main theme it's just done so subtly so beautifully it really sort of made my hair stand on end remembered when i was a kid actually watching the indiana jones films for the first time and that same kind of feeling i had there's a beautiful sort of melancholy joyous meeting between the sound that you hear and the emotions that you're feeling it's just tiptoeing on the edge of despair and then it comes back oh wonderful go and listen to it the exact moment i'm talking about so around about one minute into the piece so go and have a listen to it and see what you think similar thing to the binary sunset part in star wars when luke looks out and sees the planets there yeah when he's all alone it's that type of thing the soundtrack from indiana jones and the dial of destiny thanks for tuning in people hope you enjoyed today's review hit that subscribe button to help the channel to continue to grow and give this video a thumbs up like my name is ed bud and i'll be seeing you 